Hi, this is the overview video for chapter 1, Temperature and Heat. Chapter 1 covers many topics that I hope are already familiar to you from your previous science classes or general science background exposure. For example, the idea of temperature being associated with hot and cold, that things come to thermal equilibrium, <laughs> when things get hot, they expand, that sort of stuff. If these are not already familiar to you, this is one of the main reasons that the textbook is assigned to make sure that everyone can get all necessary background, both for those who came into this class very well prepared and for those who did not come into this class very well prepared. In the rest of this overview video, I will highlight a few important ideas to take away from this chapter. The first, is the Kelvin temperature scale, which is also known as the absolute temperature scale. It is called absolute scale because on the Kelvin scale, zero Kelvin has a special meaning. On the Celsius or the Fahrenheit scale, zero degree is chosen arbitrarily. In the case of Celsius scale, zero degrees arbitrarily chosen to be the melting point of ice. But why ice? Why not dry ice? Why not melting point of copper? In the case of Fahrenheit scale, zero degree has no special meaning other than that it's very cold temperature. I think it's approximately minus 15 degrees Celsius. Um, we will get to this special meaning of zero Kelvin in the next chapter the kinetic theory of gases. But for now, I will leave you with this. In this class, when in doubt, express temperatures in the Kelvin scale. You will see a few formulas and laws later on, which will assume that temperatures are expressed in an absolute temperature scale. If you use the numbers in the Celsius scale and not the Kelvin scale, you'll end up with the wrong results. The second is the idea of heat and calorimetry. In chemistry and physics, we use the word heat in a very specific sense. Heat is energy transfer caused by temperature difference. In everyday English, heat is a synonym with the thermal energy. Sometimes we say heat energy, but the technical definition of heat always refers to an energy transfer. With this idea of heat, we get into specific heat. Amount of heat needed to change the temperature of some amount of substance by a degree or a Kelvin. And this will be very important to calorimetry. If you have taken high school chemistry, then I hope all of this sounds familiar. If you have not, this is the intuition behind it. Imagine some material whose temperature you are going to change with a heat transfer. If there is more of the same material, then of course more heat would be needed to change its temperature by the same amount. And if we want to change the temperature by a greater amount, then of course it would take more heat. Both of these ideas are contained in equation 1.5. Heat needed to change the temperature of a thing by delta T is proportional to the mass of the thing. The conversion factor from kilogram times Kelvin to Joule for energy is what is called specific heat or specific heat capacity. In calorimetry, this basic intuitive idea is combined with the conservation of energy. Heat transferred out of an object is equal to the heat transferred into another object and to form calorimetry problems. Take a look at the examples here and try out the homework questions. While we'll, we won't spend a lot of time on calorimetry questions, 
you should know how to do these calculations when needed. The third and last is understanding of the direction of heat transfer associated with phase changes and the idea of latent heat, which refers to heat transfer necessary to cause phase change to happen. It's called latent because if you are causing the phase change to occur by transfer of heat, as you can see in this diagram, the temperature does not change as the phase is changing. There will be a separate video to cover this, so I will just leave you with this statement. Boiling is a cooling process. When you can explain this uh, statement intuitively, you have understood the heat transfer that takes place with vaporization and analogously with melting slash freezing intuitively. So that's all. There are other things you should know, like mechanisms of heat transfer, but you can read all about conduction, convection, and radiation if you didn't already know. Bye.